Sleep is one of the most magical experiences in the reality of this entire universe. Sleep, if you know what it is and if you're aware of how to use it, it is one of the most powerful tools for you to create any reality that you desire. And sleep is as sacred as life. In this video, I'm going to teach you things that you probably have never known about sleep and how to actually use this magical state that is going to change your life forever. Hello Starseeds, welcome to Starseed Energetics. My name is Ashtar Mission to bring you some of the highest frequency content and in this video, we're going to be talking about sleep. Sleep is so taken for granted. Even people who value sleep for the simple function of it, that they're going to have a better quality waking state or that they're gonna have better recovery or that they're gonna have better integration, whatever energies they're going through, they don't understand the extent to which sleep is one of the most powerful, sacred, magical tools that you've ever been given. Sleep is like a state of existence that you, if you learn to program it, if you learn to use it, would be like tapping into a hundred percent of your potentials. Yes, it has the power to activate a hundred percent of your potentials if you actually know what it is. It is a, literally a miracle that we get to sleep and what happens during sleep. So, Okay, so let me start by sharing a personal story. As you know, I am a genetic extraterrestrial hybrid. I've been extremely interdimensional since I was a child. And I will tell you that when I was a young, young child, before I had all this social trauma happen to me, if you were to ask my, say, six-year-old self or seven, eight-year-old self, what is your favorite thing in the world? I would quite literally tell you sleep programming and I didn't have words for it back then but that ritual of falling asleep and conducting your mind in a way that you are programming your sleep or you're setting the intentions for your sleep was literally my favorite part of the day that I would look forward to that part of the day for the whole day like I would have the waking day I would have the day and I had an amazing great time during the day but I would get so excited for that time where I would fall asleep and it's that precise interval between going from your waking state into falling asleep that holds this extremely powerful magical quality where you can create anything you desire and i would notice that that state was so high frequency and powerful even though i didn't have words for it back then and then i would notice that in the morning and for the rest of my waking days moving onwards i could kind of set the tone of the frequencies of of the near future by having the sleep programming so what it did and how much it impacted my energy that sometimes I would during the process of falling asleep if I were to fall asleep and I could catch myself drifting asleep and I could wake myself back up and do it again I would really try to do that and this mind you I was like a six seven year old kid and it's almost like when you know when you're doing uh, yoga nidra and in the middle of you falling asleep you catch it and you kind of wake back up in that liminal space I just loved that liminal space of consciousness and what you were capable of creating in that liminal space of consciousness I, of course when I like grew up more and I went to like high school and stuff like that I kind of like let that go because I had like relationships and people wanted to talk to me like like people wanted to talk to me on the phone at night and so that kind of like took away that ritual and I feel like that's one of the primary reasons why I went through a really dark period is because I lost touch with that magical state here's where that's relevant what I did back then it's not something that I somebody taught me how to do but in my knowing these are things that I learned to do in my previous incarnations or parallel incarnations on higher dimensional systems of living and also primarily conditioned from Atlantis that's something that 
the education system would teach you how to do to actually make use of your liminal space of consciousness during falling asleep. What will happen is that during the liminal space of consciousness, if you program specific frequencies, emotions, thought system, belief systems, and general tone of your harmonic frequencies during that liminal space of consciousness, it will carry that entirely into your subconscious, unconscious, superconscious realms that you get to touch when you're actually sleeping. And this is when everything sinks between your human experience, your conscious reality, your conscious mind with all the different levels of your mind. And whatever you carry through there, you kind of get to carry it to be programmed into your field from all these higher and more profoundly deep levels of your mind so here's where it becomes relevant for you is that this is an opportunity for you to actually consciously manifest things manifest the reality it's that the tone for your reality by doing exactly what I did when I was a kid but you can apply it to whatever makes you feel the most fulfilled so for example if it's in this life and you want to create a life where you're Um, so overjoyed doing certain things or having manifested certain things I'm not saying that those external manifestations are the cause of your fulfillment but it's a good it is a good anchor point for you to tune into what you would feel like which is ultimate bliss and joy um, through all the personal discernment of what you prefer to experience and it's a powerful powerful thing to do but here's where it gets really important so that's one functional way to use that state however there's an important piece of this where most people have no idea how to go to sleep most people literally will act like the entire waking state is the most important part of their day and then sleep is just like some afterthought sleep is just like some side note that they will just like okay it's time to go to sleep let me just go to sleep like whatever it's it's almost like what i can compare it to is like being able to make love to somebody you truly truly have a soul connection with versus like having a one night stand that doesn't mean anything like people will treat their sleep like the empty one night stand that doesn't mean anything when they could be having this extremely divinely tantric experience with their sleep state and people will just kind of like almost feel like it's their duty to go to sleep like oh it's like something i it's like a chore almost for for a lot of people and you shouldn't be treating it like that. You should be treating it with utmost respect, love and gratitude for it. And like try to fall asleep in any way. You should go through a process of truly relaxing your body, taking away any tension, relaxing your mind, getting into a very peaceful state, letting go of your thoughts. Don't let yourself overthink during the process of falling asleep. Can you imagine when you're going into that sacred portal of all the higher and deepest levels of your mind and you're just overthinking through it and you're taking all these overthinking thoughts into that state it's like a complete opposite of what you should be doing or like people are worrying themselves like having fear like you should seriously get into the most meditative state as possible that's number one so if you can at least be at peace that's enough but if you're used to being at peace then you can add in the more proactive stages of actually creating the harmonic frequencies that you desire to program your reality with and you do not understand how powerful this is and when you get really precise and detailed you can actually create very hypersensory downloads to take into your sleep state so again the most important thing is that you're at peace mentally and physically while drifting asleep you should scan your body get rid of all any stuckness through your body any stiffness you should totally relax your body as if you're having like a shavasana at the end of yoga where you are completely relaxing yourself from the tips of your toes to the top of your head just completely relaxing and this is also similar to how you should go into yoga nidra that process of scanning each part of your body is essentially how you should go to sleep as well let go of thoughts transcend your mind and if you would like you can plant the seeds where you would like to commune and have a divine union with your deepest and highest levels of your mind so with that being said i want to share some tips that will help you get the best sleep possible obviously eliminate caffeine as much as possible and some of these things are going to be so repetitive to you but i just want to make sure that maybe some people don't know so i I just want to go through all the basics in the evening time don't have all your lights on it's terrible like 
we have these artificial lights like on the ceiling on the lamps and whatever it is so bright and it'll confuse your brain so you know what's interesting these you know these lights that i use for filming i ha have them everywhere even when i travel it's one of my staples because at night i don't like putting on any fluorescent lights i don't like putting on any bright lights i just like to put like red pink or purple lights and nothing else in the evening when it gets dark because these lights are lower Calvin lights that are easier for your brain to process without feeling like it's daytime. So it still helps you see in the room, but it still doesn't confuse your brain into thinking that it's like complete daytime. So it's important to have your lighting situation figured out and don't, don't you know, don't even if you have to watch something on your device, it's really amazing to to watch something at the end of the day, like go on YouTube, like watch a tarot reading. I love doing that too. But I always make sure my screen, laptop screen is like at the nighttime mode and like the lowest level that is relevant for the nighttime. What else? Don't do anything mentally active at the like last three hours of the night. Obviously don't eat anything. And it's so interesting because people have these extraneous morning routines and I get that and how important that is and I agree, but the evening routine, the rituals that you have before going to sleep should be just as extensive. You should ideally have some sort of a restorative movement, just like how you, when you wake up, you want to have an active movement. You should have a set of restorative movement to relax your body. I love doing yin yoga. If you can do yin yoga, like search it on YouTube, do 30 minutes to an hour every night before you go to sleep. It's one of the most ideal ways to go to sleep. You will notice a drastic shift in the quality of your sleep if you do yin yoga or restorative yoga yoga before you go to sleep and also have like this meditative process just like how people wake up and they meditate you should have a some sort of a meditative practice before you drift to sleep as well when you go to sleep you should just have so much gratitude and knowing and this is where you really program your life sure the morning routine programs your day but sleep routine programs your long term and so i would even go as to say that sleep is potentially one of the most exciting reasons to live and i'm not talking about sleep state on its own but what it really what it really stands for if you want quantum healing it's one of the best times to ever do that. So if you have like an energy session that you want to do or like transmissions, you can do it before going to sleep as well. And the, like the last remaining set of frequencies before you go to sleep is going to literally set the tone for a long term. What you do in the morning will set the tone for the short term. And both are very important, but don't forget about your sleep rituals and don't forget that sleep is one of the most important things in your entire life. I really think it's funny how people have been programmed to think that sleep is somehow like a waste of life. You know, there's some people who draw up all these statistics like we waste this much time sleeping. I'm like, no, that period of sleeping is potentially some of the most important time of our entire lives it really is it's a communion between your human incarnation versus like a continual checkup with all the deepest and purest levels of your mind and with this i do want to talk about people who get nightmares and entities i've had so many clients come to me and tell me about nightmares and entities that visit them astral fields and unwanted dreams that they get first of all if you treat your sleep like this sacred, it will change your entire sleep tone. Second of all, what you, whatever you encounter in your dreams will reflect back to you the prominent frequencies that you're dealing with in your waking state. So if you feel powerless during your sleep state, for example, through a nightmare, or if you feel powerless during your sleep in your dream states, it means that you feel powerless during your waking state. So if you want to stop having those nightmarish experiences and these entities and attachments, we obviously went through this entire thing about how to have boundaries and how to raise your frequency. So watch that again if that helps you. But it does mean that you feel like you're out of control with your entire waking state as well. Like your waking life, you feel controlled. You probably blame the government or you, you feel like external circumstances have a hold over you. But let me tell you, when you wake up to the power of yourself, when you truly know the power of yourself, you won't have entities bothering you. They won't even be able to approach you. You have to know your power. You have to know your mastery 
And you have to know that you are the one who gets to create your life and how to direct it. You don't get to control your life, but you get to direct it. If you're sailing, the entire ocean is the core flow of your movement. However, you get to direct the boat. You know what I mean? So it's not that your entire life, you're controlling it. There's a greater intelligence creating the momentum, but you still get to direct your life. I used to have to deal with entities and things like that. When I was in those stages where I told you, like I stopped doing the sleep programming and you know, I, I got into all these negative lifestyle habits from going to high school in North America and having like a terrifying family environment. Um, that's when I had to deal with these like nightmares or entities or sleep paralysis. But I can tell you that when I'd been initiated to clear these entities and literally see like entities, even when I wake up in my room, I would see them in the nighttime and stuff like that. I just knew my power. It's first principles. If I see a negative entity and that paranormal thing actually exists, the exact same polarity exists in the light. So I just kind of invoke that and I knew that I'm able to invoke that. It's like a deep knowing of my power and you can do the same. If you actually know your power, you won't have nightmares anymore. You won't have these entities attachments that you'll be outside of the range of their frequencies. Entities and attachments, especially astral attachments that portal in through people's sleep states, they can only approach you if you are insecure about your power if you're unaware of your power if you are actually aware from the core of your being of your power they are not in the vibrational match to be in your field at all so know your power this is not something i can give you directions how to know your power because it's something that you from the core of your being from the cells of your body know your power and if it's going to take you a mental walkthrough to actually realize like, okay, first principles thinking, first principles thinking, if you have a consciousness that is aware of a reality, that means that it stems from one consciousness because there's only one. And I'm not talking about numbers. I'm talking about the context. I remember somebody asked me, <laughs> somebody actually very intelligent asked me, I just told him, at the end of the day, the highest levels of reality and the highest levels of consciousness is in unity. Everything stems from one. And he said, like, but how do you really know that? How do you really know that everything is truly at the end of the day one? What if there is a duality at the end of the day, like at the core existence level? Like, what if there's more than one? And my simple answer was, what comes before two? One was before two. So everything is based essentially from one. Therefore, you have nothing to fear. You come from that one consciousness. You are based from that highest, most powerful level of consciousness. If you have an awareness rendering this right now, you know, that's first principles thinking around existence. So there is no dual force trying to oppose you. And if you are aware that you are aware, there is literally nothing that can take away your power. I hope that this has been helpful. Thank you so much for being here. This has been a part of a 24 day transmission and activation for advanced star seeds and extraterrestrial hybrids. I'll see you tomorrow where I'll be actually creating a sleep activation. So I want this to be like an entire eight hour activation that you can fall asleep to with the process of conditioning you for ideal sleep. So this is going to be a little bit of a different activation that you can sleep to. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.